Hey, welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. Now that my Monster Linux PC build is done, I wanted to spend some time on showing you some things that you will have to do once you get everything set up. And if you have not seen my original Monster Linux PC build video, be sure to check it out in the description below. I go into a lot of detail on how I built my Linux PC. Now, for every single PC build, one thing that you're definitely going to need, no matter what you're using, is an operating system. Okay, your hardware is not going to work without an operating system, whether you have Windows, Mac, or in my case, Linux. Now, in the whole community of operating systems, Windows, by far, is the largest when it comes to a desktop operating system. So, with that being the case, a lot of the drivers that are available for your hardware it's going to be available for Windows first. However, that situation is changing in the Linux community. And if you've ever had to install Linux before, um, you'll know that in the modern age, it is much, much easier to do than the original uh, day and age of when Linux first came out. You know, So Linux was first released around 1991. And my very first install of Linux, if I remember correctly, was on Red Hat Linux. And at the time, if you wanted to install Linux, it was pretty much a huge, huge effort. It was a nightmare in a lot of cases. Things such as installing your video drivers or even getting your internet to work, whether that would be directly through a connection or through Wi-Fi, it was simply not easy at all. And in some cases, you just could not get things to work. And back then, everything was command line based. So, um, you know, it wasn't easy. Nothing, nothing like it is today. However, today, I think for the majority of people, getting Linux installed and getting your drivers to work is pretty much a simple effort. However, the things that are still uh, a, an ongoing challenge for a lot of people using Linux is drivers for your GPU and drivers for your CPU in some cases. In my case, for my GPU, I am using an AMD RX 470 GPU. And for my CPU, I am using an Intel Core i7-6700K. So today I'm gonna be showing you how I installed drivers for each one of these pieces of hardware. And also, I'm gonna talk about a few bugs that I ran into while using this version of Linux, which is Linux Mint 8. So the first and most important driver that you want to install is your video drivers um, cause, because obviously that is what you need to see everything. And for me, the driver of choice is the AMD RX 470. So I would just go into Google and just type it in. And obviously most of your hardware is going to come with some type of CD or DVD but a lot of people don't even use those anymore. And if you want the latest and greatest, uh, you want to get it from their website. Now, you can always go to AMD's site and then look up the drivers that way. But I think it's easier just to do a Google search. And if you go here, these are the AMD GPU Pro drivers. These are the latest drivers. And for me, um, Linux Mint is Ubuntu-based. And a lot of people using Linux, it is Ubuntu-based. Uh, operating system so this is the one you want to download I've already downloaded this but this is the version that you want to download and also if you are going to be running games that use the Vulkan API you would download and install the Vulkan SDK I didn't do that because at this point honestly there really isn't many games that use the Vulkan API and if they do it's not on Linux yet okay now as you can see AMD I think has done a great job in providing drivers for a lot of their GPUs specifically the newer RX series and Nvidia has also stepped up the game when it comes to providing drivers you know so I would say the majority of this is being pushed by not only Android, uh, which most people know is that uh, runs on the Linux kernel, uh, but also by new um, desktop gaming operating systems like Steam OS. So uh, the support is growing in those communities because, you know, I mean, you need drivers to play uh, video games on your GPU. So um, if you wanted to install that, you can, but I didn't because, I, like I said earlier, I don't think it's necessary at this point. Okay, so I'm not going to actually go through the actual install because I've already installed it, but I will go through a walkthrough of the instructions that they provided. Okay, so here's the instructions. And I'm going to bring up a command line, which is right here. And here is my folder. It's in the downloads folder. Okay, so 
whenever you download the drivers, you'll get this particular tar file, okay? And all you would do is just right click on your mouse and extract here, and you would get this particular folder right here. Now, AMD has instructions, and they're all command line based, okay? So this command is how you would extract the actual folder out of that tar file, which we did through the GUI, okay? So that's already done. Now, the second step is how to actually install the scripts itself so that you could put your drivers in. So I'm going to show you how that works. So here, if you're new to Linux, uh, this might not be familiar for you uh, if you've never used a command line, but just kind of like do what I do in terms of typing in the commands. So whenever you open up your terminal, just type in ls and that will list all the folders and files that you see in your home directory right now. So we downloaded this in the downloads folder. So you can see there's downloads. Just type in CD and then you would go to downloads. Right click on your mouse, copy, right click and paste, press enter. Type ls again and you'll notice there's two files. There is the tar file which you see here and then there's the folder file. What we want to do is go inside this folder file, okay? So you do a CD highlight this whole folder and then you would just paste it right here okay do it ls again and let's go into the folder so you can see graphically what is inside here so and really the only one that we're concerned about is this this AMD GPU Pro install okay this is an actual script file uh, this will run all the install steps that you need and so if you see here there's that same file right there and if you go here, this is actually the command that you would copy and paste. So all you would do, you could type it in if you want, but all you would do, you highlight this whole thing. You right click on your mouse, you copy, and then you paste it right here, and then you would press enter. And after you do that, all the drivers that you need for your GPU, at least this AMD RX 470 GPU will be installed. And after that, you would just reset your machine and everything should look fine um, now whenever you do boot up uh, Linux Mint for the first time you're gonna notice like the resolution is not correct and that because the drivers aren't installed yet but once you do this everything will look just fine okay so after you do that you can add this part right here this will allow you to run the Vulkan uh, APIs the Vulkan drivers and so this would require you add uh, your user account to the video group okay now you can do this through command line which is what they go through right here but there is an easier way all you would do is go to menu go to administration you would go to users type in your password which is your login password find a an user and then you go here to groups click on it find the video group click on a checkbox click on OK and that's it so I think that's a lot easier than going through the command line. Now, you do not need to do this unless you're going to be using uh, the Vulkan driver. However, I'd recommend you do this now so that you don't have to do it later. I mean, and you probably forgot to do this whenever you are running uh, Vulkan-based games. Okay, so that is for the GPU drivers. Everything should work fine, and I've had no issues with this uh, once I installed these drivers. So that's really great that AMD was able to provide that. Now, I will put the caveat that uh, normally uh, for the Linux-based drivers, specifically for the GPU, it is not going to be the latest and greatest that you would get on Windows. So I just want to put that out there. However, I've had no problems with this, and it runs games just fine. Okay, so we'll go ahead and exit this. Now, the second type of drivers that you're going to want to install is for your CPU. As I said, mine is an Intel Core i7-6700K. So all you would do is go to Menu, Administration, and here's Driver Manager. You would type in your password. And what Linux Mint would do, it would look into the repositories to look for any available drivers for your particular hardware. And Linux, the Driver Manager, has done a great job in automatically recognizing which drivers that you use. Now, the majority of times for the general user, you normally don't have to install any other drivers because Linux will find the right ones. However, there are cases where you definitely want to use the proprietary drivers, okay? In this case, Linux shows two of them, 
One is do not use, meaning that you just do not want to use any proprietary drivers. But it also shows this Intel microcode for my computer, which is compatible with Intel CPUs. And I went ahead and checked this box, applied, and I restarted my machine. And then after that, I was able to get better performance, not only on my video editing, where I was able to render things a lot quicker, but also the Steam games that I played, I got much better frame rates and it was also more stable once I installed this Intel CPU driver. Okay, so this isn't always the case where you would want to use or have to use the proprietary drivers, but in this case, I recommend that you use the proprietary drivers. And for the most part, I think if you are just a general user, you don't have uh, you know, a, a dedicated GPU and so forth, the majority of the time, the drivers that Linux Mint uses automatically will work just fine. And that is pretty much it for drivers. Just for my GPU and Intel, that's all I needed to do. Everything else on my hardware worked just fine. And that was the one of the things that I was really uh, concerned about is the fact that Newer hardware, uh, the drivers historically have not been available for a Linux desktop operating system. But uh, whenever I did build my PC and uh, I was able to find drivers and it automatically found the right ones, I was pleasantly, pleasantly surprised because Linux, uh, majority of times, it works better on older hardware because of the fact that there are drivers available for it. So uh, that is a big plus for people who are building a Linux PC in the current modern age. Now, the second thing I want to talk about is bugs that I experienced in Linux Mint. Okay, so the first bug that I want to talk about, and it was random. I couldn't really uh, reproduce this, but it was something that I want to address because you might run into this as well. So a lot of us, we do use uh, multiple windows when we're using our computer. That is normal. So what happened was, like when I had multiple windows open, even if it's just two, randomly the windows would just close okay and that might be just an annoyance however if you're copying really large files that can be bad and i ran into this issue before on my older machine when i was testing out linux mint 18 on my older laptop i'm running linux mint 17.3 now this has only happened a total of three times um so it is very rare however it does happen. So I just wanted to point that out. I really think it has something to do with Linux Mint 18, but I can't be 100% sure. But I remember when I was testing it out on my Linux Mint 17.3 machine that it occurred on Linux Mint 18. So I just want to put it out there. Now, the second problem I have has to do with a video, okay? Specifically codecs. So let me change this real quick. So whenever you have a video file, okay? Um, this is what happens, okay? So the default video player um, will look for additional codecs or decoders for video. Okay, now if you are not aware, um, all your formats like MP4, .wav, and so forth, they all use proprietary decoders and codecs. So you couldn't play your video without those codecs. And the thing is, uh, this is done for legal issues. And so before, Linux Mint already installed all these third-party codecs for you whenever you installed. But nowadays, that is not the case. You would have to choose to install those instead of it being installed by default. And one of the problems that I have with this is every time I open up a video file, specifically MP4, it would automatically ask me to install these extra plugins these decoders. However, even after I installed them, I still had the same error message coming up and I had problems. Okay, so I didn't want to spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to fix this. So my solution is would be to change your video player default from the video player, okay, to VLC. Okay, so let me quickly go through that again. So you right click on your mouse, open with, go to other application, choose VLC and set as default. Okay, and then click on okay. So let me go ahead and close that. And now whenever you open up a video file, it's going to open up it with VOC. Like and obviously the great thing about VOC is that it's a wonderful media player. It works on multiple platforms and it plays pretty much every single codec available. And so that's what I would recommend. Hopefully um, there will be some type of default fix in the future where you don't have to do that. Okay. Now, um, besides those two bugs, um, I really did not encounter anything else that was really serious or that was a problem for the most part after i installed the drivers 
And after I took care of those two problems, uh, this has been running like a dream. I'm really happy about this Linux PC build. And I'm even happier that um, if you are going to be doing a Linux PC build today, um, you are going to most likely have a really, really easier uh, user install experience and also a better user experience once all the drivers and uh, all your setup is done. So, if you had any uh, thoughts on Linux installs, drivers, uh, bugs, be sure to leave them in the comments area below. And as always, if you got value out of these videos, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. See you in another episode. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, head over to geekoutdoors.com and I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.